Hey, guess what today's video is about? I don't usually make videos about flashlights, but these are also supposed to be self-defense tools. And I've got another zombie head to do shenanigans with, so I figured it would be interesting to see how much damage you can do to one of those with a simple flashlight. These two I got from Gearbest. They currently have a, another sales event going on, which I'm going to link down below. And uh, by the way, don't worry, there's not going to be too much boring blah blah. I'm just going to give you a few... A bit of information about them and then we'll get directly to the bashing well maybe the actual light test first because that's what a flashlight is supposed to do anyway so uh, this one here is made by uh, ywx light and uh, it's available for 14 dollars 26 currently and it's powered either by a 18650 battery or three triple a batteries and yes it is supposed to be usable for self-defense as well. I'm not a flashlight guy and I'm not going to pretend to know a lot about them so it's limited how much I can say about the quality of the design and all that. So this one is a Liao or L-E-A-O uh, seems to be the manufacturer and it's a nice compact flashlight. It's got a striking surface here. They say this tip here is tungsten titanium alloy. One thing I like about this it's also got a seat belt cutter that's really handy to have something like this in your car particularly since this can also be used as a glass breaker so that's something that i definitely like great to have in your car and uh, it is powered with three uh, AAA batteries and it's got a texturized silicone grip here in the center so let's see how they work first just a light test and the big one first this one is pretty underwhelming uh, brightness of flashlights is always difficult to show accurately on camera so here are the different modes it's enough to find your way but it's definitely a comparably dim flashlight i've had a lot brighter ones now the other one the smaller one ironically is more powerful it's not the brightest i've ever had but it's quite decent So what about the Marshall use? Well, at first I thought I didn't do any noticeable damage, but as I dig around here, where was it? There. There, so the skull actually did cave in there. Well, good thing I have a flashlight, huh? Also broke off some of the cheekbone, it looks like. Frontal assault shouldn't really do much. It's too thick and hard here, but I'll try it anyway, just to see. Oh, whoa. Okay, I did not expect that. <laughs> Look at that, holy crap. I completely broke through the bone here, I can yeah, I can stick my finger in there. Wow. Okay. That's crazy. I did not ex- Whoa, the entire... The entire frontal bone here is caved in. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, actually. For the flashlight. Whoa. Well, buddy, <laughs> you've seen better days. Ended rightly by a flashlight. Okay, so on to the bigger one. Where do I strike him now? Hmm. I think on top of the head I need to go because I have these areas already compromised. Let's see what I can do here. Yep. I 
that feels like it caved it in. Although, this may be because of the previous damage. I gotta strike him in the face too. Now this is way harder to damage and it's gonna be a lot harder on the flashlight, so we'll see if this can withstand it. That's, that's a shattered nose right there. Well, that puts the Sammy heads into perspective. I remember how much trouble I had damaging the one of those. You know, because the, the gel is very tough and makes it extremely hard to damage. And that was with far heavier implements than this. But now with the flashlight? Hmm. Ah, the lighting here is really not ideal, but I'll have to make do. We, we were driving for two hours to find a spot to do the testing, so finally this seems halfway workable. And there it goes. <laughs> And that's the end of that. I mean, I guess you could re-solder the, the cables, but it's definitely no longer functional as it is. That's what I was worried about. It did not seem terribly sturdy. I'm not really surprised because the threads aren't very deep. So, yeah. Can't say this thing does very well. I would certainly not want to rely on this in a serious situation. And don't give me crap like you're not supposed to hit the head. I mean, <laughs> what else are you supposed to do? If, uh, if you're dealing with an attacker and you have a blunt impact tool, the best target is the head because you're striking them in the arms or in the torso. It's not going to do much. So you pretty much have to go for the head. So yeah, there we go. I think I may still be able to, yeah, I can still screw this back together, but um, yeah, of course, it's disconnected now, so it doesn't work as a flashlight anymore. I'm gonna give it one more chance, even though I don't think it's gonna do much. Uh, whack him uh, over the top of the head. Uh, it felt so, oh, there we go. Yeah, once it's compromised, doesn't really want to go anymore. Yeah, that's that's done. <laughs> that is definitely done. So, as is so often the case, you get what you pay for. The small flashlight here costs about twice as much as the larger one and outperforms it in every regard. Um, I mean, I'll put this one here in the description for reference, but I cannot recommend it at all. This is... Um, frankly junk. That's a definite nope from me. This little thing, on the other hand, really surprised me. I mean, I figured that this tip here would be very unpleasant to be hit with. This should be fairly effective. But it still surprised me that I actually managed to crack the forehead of the zombie skull. Not easy to just smash that and turn it into mush. Uh, it took several hits which was to be expected because it's it's not a very heavy thing. But, I mean, if, if you got hit, especially in the temple with this, this would be extremely painful, would probably knock somebody out, uh, it, and it can't even crack the skull. So the thing is with self-defense items, sometimes the, the mindset that people have, and, I mean, the manufacturers as well, is sometimes the idea that, oh, you, you just, you know, you just hit them a little bit and that'll solve the problem. And I disagree with that. I generally think if you end up in a situation where you feel the need to use a weapon or, you know, any kind of item as an improvised weapon, it's probably a serious situation. Uh, you shouldn't just, you know, draw it and start waving it at somebody just all willy-nilly, so to speak. So whenever you use something like this to strike somebody who's getting in your face and threatening you, or even if you just threaten to use this yourself, uh, there is a certain risk that things escalate and that you'll be in a serious fight. So in that case, you have to be able to rely on it. And, you know, if you know, shit hits the fan, you need to be able to do enough damage to stop the threat, you know, stop the attack. 
So this would do it, I think. Like if you if you strike at the the head, you know, even arms. I mean, this is really more pain compliance. You could probably crack a bone in the arm, but um, this this is really where we're talking pain compliance, and you can't really rely on pain compliance if you're attacked by a druggie or somebody who just has a very low pain threshold slash high pain tolerance then you can't rely on that so you need to be able to do some damage and this does surprisingly so yet it's still a pretty compact item and you can carry this just about anywhere because it is just a flashlight i mean maybe in some places they would object to this striking tip here i'm not sure it depends on the regulations where you are so do check the law but overall yeah this is quite good and this is did pretty damn well i gotta say and also it still works perfectly after striking the zombie head so yeah this one i recommend link down below i said i hope you found this interesting thanks for watching and have a good one folks